Got a great show for you today. If uh, you love uh, losers, because that's where we're at. Loser Central, the loser capital of the sports world. The Giants got a win yesterday, but so what? We're all a bunch of losers. The New York Knicks couldn't come back home and beat a bad Magic team. The New York Jets, let's just start with them. Because that was an embarrassment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hi, finally oh, recognizing way, that. Hi. Good, I forgot Evan was here. Uh, good afternoon, Evan. How are you today? I'm great. not great. I'm not great. Yeah. Um, here's my... Well, uh, ah! Here's the problem. You came off a of bye week. New England came off of a gut-wrenching emotional loss to the Dallas Cowboys. And you didn't show up. And that includes Robert Sala who's supposed to be the defensive wonder kid and uh, everyone else involved with the New York Jet franchise. I've been their biggest fanboy since uh, Zach got drafted, since Robert Sala got the job. But yesterday was beyond unacceptable. Yesterday is the kind of game that makes you question if Robert Sala was the right choice. That's it. That's the kind of game we got yesterday. The only thing New England did was run freaking screen passes. And they didn't see it coming. It's the only play they ran when Matt Jones threw the ball. And to have a 50 bone dropped right on your face after a bye week against a hated rival who has owned us now 12 consecutive times, it makes you have to rethink the whole damn thing. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you. It's not about you know, me. It's the got Jets, nothing to do with me. The Jets haven't been able to stop a screen <laughs> pass all season long. Have you noticed that? Have Jet fans noticed that? The difference is, yesterday afternoon, Bill Belichick, not because he's some evil genius, but because he's competent, says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to continue to dial up these screen passes until the New York Jet defense can show me they can stop it. And they never did. Yeah. John Franklin Myers, you got paid. Remember? Got paid. Congratulations. Where the hell have you been the last two weeks? Quincy got, Williams. Got <laughs> Quincy Williams, hey. Oh, who cares about Quinn and we've got Quincy. Where the hell have you been? And I ask this about Robert Sala, and I ask this especially about Mike LaFleur. What the hell have we seen through six games that lead you, they know what the hell they're doing? Give me anything other than just hope. Other than, well, they can't be worse than Gase. Because guess what? They've been worse. This is pathetic. This is embarrassing. And I am sick and tired of blindly saying, well, it'll turn around. They're in good hands. Why? What about Robert Sala over these six games? I Give me some evidence. Give me some freaking evidence on why you think he knows what he's doing. Well, why mean, Mike he... LaFleur, who has two weeks to think about, hey, how can I make this offense look competent opening drive of the game? And what does he do? He dials up, let's run Michael Carter straight in the middle. Let's run Michael Carter off right guard. And then Zach Wilson gets sacked. What a game plan, Mike. It took you two weeks to come up with that garbage. Embarrassing. Yeah, no, it's the worst loss in a long time. I mean, a 50 bone against New England of all teams uh, after a bye week. It just, it's embarrassing. And, you know, I, for whatever reason, I'd like to think Robert Sal is still the guy. I like why? what he said afterwards. Give me I think something. Give me, give me one. Prior to yesterday's game, I thought defensively the New York Jets had played pretty well. Uh, Zach Wilson is a rookie quarterback. I, a quarterback, I can accept the failures of a rookie quarterback because it's what they do. But yesterday changed the game for me. Yesterday, you know, if you lose that game, you know, I don't know, 17-13, sucks we lost, but okay, I see development maybe, right? If the offense maybe could score, uh, I'd see development maybe. But it was embar- It was beyond embarrassing because midway through the third quarter, down by 30, <laughs> the New England Patriots ran a flea flicker. Yeah. It was unsuccessful, yeah. but they were they were – they were mocking us. Yes. That was Bill Belichick saying, all gas, no brakes. That's what Bill Belichick was saying to the New York Jets. He reminded us that even with the rookie quarterback, even though they're under 500 and frankly should be a lot better, they've been in every game but one they played this year against really good opponents. The New York Jets are a minor league franchise when compared to New England. And Bill Belichick wanted to remind us of that. I got nothing to say to him. He's right. I mean, 50 points? 
54 to be exact. How many times did Tom, Tom Brady do that to the Jets, Craig? Yuck. He never did it he to the Jets. He never did that. We've seen a lot of pathetic football over the last couple of years, and we got to go back 26 years for the last time they gave up a 50-burger, yeah. and you do it to a rookie quarterback? Yes, who only threw screen passes. Well, because the Jets <laughs> couldn't stop right. it. Like, I've never seen that in my life. You tell me that we can't guard guys deep. I don't know if they've got some kind of crazy newfangled scheme we've never we've never seen before. No. Nope. And you want to tip your cap to the other coach? No. Nope. Just came up with something brilliant? No. Nope. There was nothing brilliant or exactly. unique about it. And, Thank and, you. And that's why it's so embarrassing. Yes. Literally. Yes. Mac Jones didn't throw the ball seven yards no. down the field. No. He threw screen passes and little, you know, end around type crap. That was it. Yeah. Bro, that was it. This was not anything like splitting the atom. Like, oh my God, can you believe <laughs> this game plan Bill Belichick had? It was simple. Yeah. And coming off of a bye, look, this would have been embarrassing any week against any opponent. I want to make that clear. But when you throw in, it is the Patriots. Yep. And I pointed this out on Friday. Not that this meant anything, but I thought it was good to remember it. How embarrassing most of these losses have been to New England. It hasn't just been the Patriots have won 12 in a row. It hasn't just been that. I gave you the numbers. They get embarrassed every time they see this team. You are facing a rookie quarterback. You're facing an average football well, team. Stop. You're, You're coming off a of bye. Here's the deal. What? what? They were facing a rookie and did everything you should do and you're a great defensive mind against a rookie. It's what Belichick's known for among other things, right? We were facing a rookie and we thought we had our great defensive mind in Robert Sala, did we not? That's the bill of goods we were sold. Yeah, that that guy's going to get the most out of anything. And yes, I'm not. I'm not suggesting we have the same level of talent that they have, but we're supposed to have a great defensive mind. How can I believe that now, when you got beat? By screen passes and, of course, terrible tackling, even against the run game as well. Like the New England Patriots did nothing that should have surprised you. They did nothing unique. They did nothing different or new. There wasn't some kind of, oh my God, I've never seen that before. Right. It was basic, straightforward. We're not going to let our quarterback throw the game away. Right. We're going to let him throw little five-yard out passes, five-yard swing passes, and let's see if you he, can tackle anyone. B Bill basically <laughs> said, I've watched Jet Tape. I know that they've struggled against these screen passes. I got an experiment. What if we do it all day? What if we do it all freaking day and dare this defense to make a stop? And he did, and they couldn't. And that's why. I listened only because I, I knew I had to. I couldn't give a rat's ass what Robert Salas said after this game. I didn't care if he took accountability. I didn't care if he talked like a human. I didn't care if he talked like Joe Judge. None of it mattered. Because as much as we pay attention to it and we get annoyed sometimes by it, it's about results. It's about performance. There was nothing Robert Sala could say after this game that would make me say, well, gee, he gave a great response. I don't care. I need to see some results. And for anyone who asks the question, well, what'd you expect? What'd you expect? You thought the Jets were going to be good? No, no, no. I didn't think the Jets would be good. I used one word to describe what I wanted to see from this team this year. One word. And that was competence. That is not a high bar. The word was competence. So I'll ask you a question. Did you see any competence yesterday? No. None. So I'm not talking about they should have won seven games or eight games or, Evan, you had unrealistic expectations. With all due respect to you, I had no expectations other yeah. than competence. And I have seen no competence from this offensive coordinator. He looks like he has no idea what he's doing. Especially he had, after by, off of Byron. Like you weeks. had two weeks. I mean, that's the thing that bothers me. I mean, the 54 bothers you the most. The fact that it's against New England bothers you the most. But the fact that we had two weeks to prepare for them while they were going into overtime against the Cowboys last week and lost like a gut-wrenching game. And, K, by the way, they came out. They scored on every single possession. Yeah. Name a possession they didn't score on. Yeah, keep looking because the answer is they scored on every single one of them. It was them. embarrassing. Yes, that is as low as it gets. The New York Jets suck. They suck. And they suck. And the owner's not going to come out and say nothing, nor does it matter anyway.
Meanwhile, the New York Giants owner came out, apparently, after the New York Giants did exactly what I told you they would do, beat a bad team and a bad quarterback. The, the New York Giants defense has sucked all year, and that's the game Sam Darnold gets benched <laughs> in. So for those of you that question my not New York Giant knowledge, question my Jets some all you want. <laughs> uh, guilty as charged on that one. Yeah. But I, I'm, on, I'm on the Giants like white Craig, on rice I am year. a very fair guy to you. I'll leave the Jets aside because you've embarrassed yourself. But when it comes to the Giants, you have been right on every game. And even I have to admit this. As somebody that has supported Sam Darnold, that was beyond Sam Darnold got pathetic. benched against the Giants defense. What are we talking for, for about? P.J. Walker, who yeah. looks worse, might I now, say. I do have an answer for the Jets as Zach's going to be out the next two to four weeks and maybe longer. Who the heck knows? I will give you that. If you are a Giant fan, all right, listen, a win's a win, and now you get to play a, you know, a beaten Kansas City Chief team on national TV. Huge underdog, as you would imagine they would be, but Kansas City, you know they're going to score, especially against your defense, but they give up a boatload of points. More on that later in the week, but if you're looking to steal a win and maybe get back into a wild card race, you know, you know maybe I, you could uh, convince yourself that the Giants have a shot. I, look, I'm not telling you the Giants have a shot. I'm not telling you they're going to win seven in a row. But I will say this, in a football season especially, there's only 17 of these now. Anytime you win a football game, I don't care who you played. I don't give a damn if it's Carolina or if it's a JV team or whoever it is. You should cherish wins in the NFL, especially when you root for the local teams we've had to watch over the last few years. So you're not wrong when you talk about how pathetic Carolina is. I'm not going to argue about that. Certainly not going to argue about Sam Darnold with you anymore. But if you're a Giant fan, you are. it's okay to be happy. Just like it was okay Saturday morning for Nick fans to be happy when you beat the Orlando Magic the one time you beat them. It's okay to beat bad teams. You should never apologize for beating a bad team. 